In seventh grade standard RP3, students will take what they've learned in sixth grade with unit rates and take it to the next step using proportional relationships to solve problems involving um, <clears throat> items like simple interest, tax, markups, um, tips, commissions, fees, and that sort of thing. For us, for the three-act task, this is how we begin uh, our teaching of RP3. A uh, three-act task is it has three distinct parts and they're designed to engage students in a real-life example. Uh, typically, like for the one that we're going to see here in just a second, we start off with a five-second clip of someone trying to set the world record for fastest texting. And we simply show the clip and let the students start asking questions. But the second part of a three-act task is where the students are seeking that more information and they're also trying to rule out information that's not needed. And then the third part of an act th a three-act task is where we discuss the solution and we reveal the solution. Okay. Is there anything? The world record likes to know, like, he has to know it to know. Okay. Is the world record important to know how long it's going to take him to type the whole paragraph? No. At this point in the Thumbs on Fire task, students have come up with their own question. I wonder how long it's going to take this person to type this entire message. And also, can he break the world record? What was your low estimate? Five, five seconds. Five seconds? How'd you guys come up with five seconds? Because nobody could possibly type that fast. Because nobody could possibly type that fast. What did you guys put for your high estimate? 45. 45 seconds? Yeah, sure. What if you guys could do it in 45 seconds? Uh, How many seconds did it take him to type the whole uh, passage? How many characters are like in the entire passage? Okay, so it says, um, how many letters did this person type? How many? Uh, what, what he needed? How many letters does he need to type? What is the record he is trying to break? One of them was how long did he type? And then the second question is how many characters did he type? Uh, the third one is how long was the passage? Well, first you have to find the unit rate of how many characters he types per second, and okay. then from there you could go to find the percentage that he has done, and then from that you could also go to how many characters more he has to type. And then that would probably tell you if he can break the world record. And then how many characters it is would tell you how long the passage is. Okay, so he typed a little bit more over one fourth of the characters in five seconds. So we know that. Okay, so, you, so you're saying he typed a little bit more than a fourth of the characters in five seconds. Okay, so how long would it take him to, take, to type all of them? Less than 20 seconds. So 42 over 157, we knew that that was about one fourth. So five seconds times four is 20 seconds. 42 over 157 is more than one fourth. We know that it would take him, it would take him at least 20 seconds. The next task that we use is the orange fizz experiment. This is from 7th grade Georgia Standards of Excellence, Unit 3 Framework, page 27. In this particular test, students are asked to compare three different orange drink mixes to see which one had the strongest orange flavor. The first part of the orange fizz task, the students are given three different formulas, and you can see them here on the screen. Um, each one contains a different amount of orange concentrate to carbonated water. Their job is to find out which of these three formulas will have the most orange taste. Some of the students will use, uh, you'll see them using part-to-part -part relationships, some will use part-to-whole, some of the students will look at the ratios as fractions and compare them with fraction bars, some will look at them as fractions and maybe put them on a number line. So the kids just use their own way of solving these to find out which one of the three uh, formula A, B, or C tastes the most orange. Okay, so that would be, for A, it would be one and a half, so we put it in the middle. And B would be two fifths, so it would be a little bit behind two, one and a half, and C is two thirds. So we had to see which one was closer to one for a hundred percent of orange. Okay, so whichever the fractions was closest to one, you knew had the most orange in it. Yep. Because we did picture and like this box, the fraction box, and then we shaded it in. And then it shows that C is, is greater than A and B. 
We thought Formula C would because it had the um, most, it had a higher orange to carbonated water uh, ratio than the other two because B had a higher carbonated water ratio than, or carbonated water than orange concentrate ratio. And Formula A had one tablespoon and of orange concentrate and two tablespoons of carbonated water. The ratio of carbonated water was higher than the orange concentrate. The next task that we use for RP3 is increasing and decreasing by a percentage, which is a formative assessment lesson from the Mathematics Assessment Project. The portion of the task that we're working on here from the Mathematics Assessment Project is a collaborative activity. The students are given four various amounts of money, and their task is to decide between each of the values if it's an increase or a decrease, and by per what percentage they go up or down between each of the the given values. All right, so how did you guys go from 200 um, down to 100? You guys put down by 50%. How did you guys get that? Um, well, 50% is counts but as a half. 100 is half of 200. And we knew it was down because it's less than 200. And you guys put 20%. So how did you get 20%? Because 20% of 200 is 40. Then we did 100 times 1.5, and then we did 33 and one third times 1.5, and we got 50 right here. So tell me how you guys, how did you guys go from 100 to $200? And you said it was up 100%. We knew that a half of, two, of 200 was, 50, was 100, and then if you do uh, 200 take away 100, it would equal 100. Hey, how did you go from 100 to 200 then? Some additional resources for help with RP3 um, would be the illustrative mathematics.org website, the Illuminations website from the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics has some great resources for not only uh, RP3 but for virtually every standard, lots of great uh, manipulatives and um, online activities for the kids. Also the Math Assessments Project, the mathshell.org website where we get our uh, form of assessment lessons and our classroom engagement tasks. Also, Graham Fletcher has lots of three-act tasks, the one in particular, the Thumbs on Fire task that we use here. Uh, he has many more for different, uh, different standards as well. And I know that Graham uh, bases a lot of his work on the work of Dan Meyer, and his blog is blog.mrmeyer.com.